By 2050, an additional 2.5 billion people will be living in urban areas. Growth like this doesn't come without consequences. When city populations exceed 10 million people, air pollution more than doubles. So how can cities meet the needs of millions more people? Today, city planners and companies are working together to tackle this problem and to develop the biggest technological innovation yet, the smart city. So what is a smart city? It's a city that uses data collection integrated within infrastructure to better manage the complexity of cities and improve the urban environment. Data allows us to do everything from reducing traffic to minimizing waste to increasing efficiency. And a system that is constructed out of millions of individuals and um, even millions of addresses, and millions of buildings and so forth. So it's a much grander conception of the digital smart city. The key to this is sensor technology. A sensor technology is the basis for an ecosystem. Your human body is an ecosystem. It works together in perfect harmony with cooperation and coordination. And why? Because of sensors. The new standard for smart cities today is to integrate sensors at key points throughout cities, creating an overall picture of how aspects within a city interact. That's the thing that's challenging about cities and transportation is, you know, everything interacts with everybody and it's a system of systems. And so um, it's interesting that some supercomputing people on the hill, um, they'll say, wow, this is much more complex than what we're doing, which is climate modeling or something just incredibly difficult. As I said, this new mobility solutions are dramatically changing these dynamics, like as we speak. At the University of Reno, Professor Hao Xu is looking at how sensor technology is revolutionizing the way we approach traffic management in cities. By putting sensors at traffic intersections, Professor Hao is gathering crucial information about vehicle and pedestrian patterns. Sensors can make it safe for pedestrians to cross the streets by triggering flashing cross signs. It also allows cars to drive closer and faster, reducing traffic collisions and congestion. The roadside LiDAR can provide um, unique and accurate traffic information that still could not be offered or provided by uh, traditional traffic sensors. Um, when we have a trajectory level information from roadside LiDAR, so that means we will not have a black um, blind spots along the road. So we will share the information with the connected autos vehicles and use that information to control existing traffic signal, pedestrian signal, to improve safety, improve mobility, and reduce the uh, fuel consumption. This is the, really the purpose of a smart city, smart transportation. While self-driving cars and sensors are on the road, new opportunities arise that are centered around mobility and increasing access for people who didn't necessarily have access before. With a growing population, city planners have to account for more than just increased congestion. They also need to consider rising food demand. This can be better managed with precision agriculture. Robots, drones, and sensors will be used on farmlands to supply increased demand. And not only can food be brought to cities more efficiently, it can be brought home faster too. Even now, sensor technology is changing the retail experience. Major vendors are using sensors to keep track of their inventory and to allow customers to purchase items by just walking out of the store. Smart technology allows us to prioritize efficient use of resources. Using autonomous buses, electric cars, or light rail helps to reduce pollution. Sensors will be key in cities becoming part of the solution for climate change, whether it be the impact of rising sea levels on transportation systems or the effect of fire risk on land use. Using LiDAR to map fuels and, and use, use those data products as a tool for seeing you know, which areas are overgrown and what, you know, where you can apply management techniques. But technology itself does not solve problems. It's thinking about how this technology is realized and put into action that will. It requires everybody to participate. It's a confluence of technology and citizens and that interdisciplinary perspective is what's going to solve it. Smart cities aren't built in a day, but this isn't futuristic or something that will start happening 10 or 20 years in the future. It's happening today, and it's happening together.